Hello everyone, my name is Ashish and you are watching another WebGuy YouTube channel and in this video we are going to learn how we can create this simple responsive top navigation menu using just HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. So let us just see what we are going to build. We will have this simple top navigation bar and it will be completely responsive. So if I resize this window, you can see that the menu is gone and we can see uh, three bars over here and when I click on these bars, you can see that the menu is displayed like this. And we also have a cross button and when I click on this cross button, you can see that again this menu has disappeared and we can see only the top nav bar. And we'll be using VS Code Text Editor with Live Server extension so that we can see all the changes in real time. So now without wasting any time, let's get started. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any of our videos. Let me first show you the file structure. We have a index.html file and then we have a script.js file and we have a style.css file. And you can see that in the index.html file, we have some basic code and we have a link tag to link to the style.css file and we also have a script tag to link to script.js file. Let me first take you through the structure of this navigation bar. We'll have a container div which will contain all the elements for this top navigation bar. Inside this, we'll have two divs. One div will contain this logo and all the menu icons and the another div will contain the hamburger menu which you can't see right now which will be only kicked in when we go into the responsive mode. So when we are resizing our browser, you can see that the hamburger div comes in. And inside this div containing the logo and other menu items, we will have another two divs which will, the first div will contain the logo and the other div will contain the menu items. And we will create all of these divs in Flexbox model. I have just given you a rough idea so that you can comprehend better when we start making this navigation bar. You will understand it better while creating it. So now let's go on to the build. And here first we'll create a top nav container. Inside this we are going to create two divs. The first div to keep this logo and all the menu items and the second div will be to keep the hamburger menu. So let's give it ID of my top nav and we'll create another div say bar container. Now inside this my top nav div we'll be creating two more divs one to hold the logo and the other to hold these menu items. So let's create a div having an ID of logo and we'll create another div having an ID of menu. Now inside the logo class, we'll create an anchor element and inside the menu class, we'll create three anchor elements. Now inside this bar container, we'll create the hamburger menu. For that, we'll use font awesome. So we'll go to Google and here we'll write font awesome 5 CDN. And then click on the first link and you'll go on to cdnjs.com and from here click on the CSS tab and copy the first link from here. Now create another link tag here and paste this link which you have just copied. And now you can use font awesome icons. Now to use font awesome icons, you can just go on to font awesome. So just go on to the font awesome website and here click on the menu icon and click on icons. Now inside this, search for bars. And we want this. So click on this. And here we have got the HTML element to use this. So we'll copy this. And paste it in here. And you can see we have got a nice hamburger menu for our top nav bar. 
Now we can close this and basically our HTML is ready. So now let's come on to the style.css file. To save on time, we'll just copy and paste the CSS path. So you can just pause and code along. So first we'll take the universal selector and we'll set the default margin and padding to zero and we'll set the box sizing to border box. Now let's give a nice gradient to our body. So we'll take the body element and we'll give it a nice linear gradient. After that, we'll grab this uh, div having an idea of top nav container and we'll give it some styling. So you can see we have given a background color of 333 and we have also given a padding of 1 RAM and we have set the display property to flex because we want the items inside this uh, top nav container to be flex items and we have set the justify content to space between so that we get this menu on the left hand side and we get this hamburger icon on the right hand side. Now we'll add some styling to the text. So for that we'll grab the anchor and the top nav container div and we'll add some styling for the text. So you can see that I have added text decoration to none so that to remove all the underlines from the links and after that we have given a color of hash EEE -E, that is a whitish color and we have set the font size to 1.3 RAM and given the font family of sans serif and since we have given padding two times you can remove the padding from here and we should not get any difference yeah that's it now we'll grab this div having the id of my top nav and which contains our logo and the menu and let's style that so you can see we have set the width of this my top nav div to 100 percent and we have set the display to flex so now the logo is on the left side and this menu items is on the right side. This is because we have set the display to flex and we have also set the justify content to space between. And we have set the align items to center so that it is centrally aligned on the vertical axis. Now we'll take these bars and we don't want to display these bars right now. We will display them using media queries and further using JavaScript. So we'll grab this div having the ID of bar container and we'll set the display to none. And you can see now the hamburger menu is gone and we can see the logo on the left side and the menu items on the right side. Now the shape of our navigation menu is coming. Now let's add some hover effects. So for that I'll select the menu div and inside this we'll select the anchor element and let's give it a pseudo class of hover. Now set the background color to dodger blue. So now you can see if I hover over this, we'll get a dodger blue background. Now the issue is if I resize this browser, we cannot see the responsive effect. So for that, let's add media queries and inside this, we will grab the div having the idea of menu. And we'll give it a top padding of 1 RAM and we'll set the display to none. Let me show you the dis let me first set the display to flex and let me show you what happens. And we'll set the width to 100% and the flex direction to column. Now let me resize the browser so that you can see the effect. So you can see that the menu is now in the vertical fashion and this is how we want. We just want it when we click on the hamburger menu and we also want this logo to be on the top and these menu items to be after the logo element. So don't worry, we are going to fix that. So for that, we'll grab this my top nav div and we'll give it a display of block. And now you can see that the logo is on the top and rest of the items are below it. And this is how we want. Just that we want to kick this through JavaScript. So we want this to show when we click on the hamburger menu. One thing which is missing is we don't have this hamburger menu. For that we forgot one thing. We will add an ID of bars here. And now in the style.css file, we'll grab the ID of bars and we'll set its display to block. And also in here, we will change this bar container and we'll only grab the ID of bars. Now you can see that we have got this hamburger menu when we resize our browser and when we expand our browser, you can see that the hamburger menu is gone. So you can see that our menu is already responsive. We just need to add some JavaScript 
so that we can see this menu only when we click on this hamburger icon. So for that, now let's come on to our script.js file and we'll also resize this browser. Yeah, we want to work in this mode so that we can see the changes. Now we'll grab this bus element and let's store it in a variable. So we'll say let bars equal to document dot get elements by id and we'll say bars then we'll also grab this bar container div so we'll create other variable say bar container and we'll set its value equal to document dot get element by id and we'll place the and we'll say bar container now let's grab this div having the id of menu because we want to hide this menu items so we'll grab this menu items also so we'll create another variable menu and we'll set its value equal to document dot get element by id and we'll say menu now we want to change the display property of this menu item when we resize the window so whenever the browser hits the breakpoint of 600 pixels you can see here then we want to hide this menu items for that we have to target the media queries and we can target the media queries by using window.matchmedia method so we'll say const mq equal to window.matchmedia and in here we'll pass the parameter of the size we want so here we want the max width 600 pixels. So we'll say max width Now if we log this MQ variable on the console, you can see that we'll get a media query list So let's do this and here we'll open the console by pressing control plus shift plus I Okay, we got an error. Okay, we have uh, get elements. We should remove this. So now that should be fine. And you can see here we have got a media query list. And inside this we have a matches property and we have the media property. Now we'll use this matches property. So basically if I write mq.matches so it will return us a boolean depending on the size of the browser. We can use this to check the size of the browser and hence we can display the menu contents according to that. So for that we'll say mq.addEventListener and in here we'll pass the change event. So whenever the media query changes we'll pass the parameter as event and I'm using the ES6 arrow function syntax and here we'll say if event dot matches sorry it should be event dot matches we want the menu dot style dot display equal to none so now when I'll resize this browser you can see that we only see the hamburger menu and the menu list is gone. But the issue is when I resize the browser back to more than 600 pixels, the menu is still not visible. We want the menu to be visible here. So for that, we will create a else statement and here we'll say menu.style.display equal to block. And you can see here, now we have got our menu items we can close this console right now and now you can see if i resize the browser you can see now the menu is gone and when i resize it back to more than 600 pixels you can see that we have got the menu items now we also want that when we click on these bars we should get the menu items displayed here vertically so for that we have already grabbed this bar container variable so we'll use this bar container variable and we'll add an event listener to this and we'll say on click 
Here we'll create an anonymous function. Again, I'm using the arrow function from ES6 syntax. And we'll say if menu dot style dot display equal to none. So basically if the menu is not visible, then we want to make it visible. And if the menu is visible, then we want to hide it. So right now we are checking if the if the menu is not visible, we'll make it visible. So we'll set menu dot style dot display equal to flex. And we can go on to the style.css file and here we'll set it to none because we are setting it through JavaScript. So here we don't require it. We'll set the initial value to none. We'll create another else statement. Okay, we made this error. We'll remove this and we'll paste it here. Okay, now it's fine. Now in the else statement, we'll write, so basically if the menu is visible, we have to set its style to none. So we'll say none. Now, when we click on this hamburger menu, we can see that our menu is being displayed and we click on it back, we can see that the menu is gone. We only need to make one small change that when we click on this hamburger menu, it should turn to a cross sign. And when we click on it back, it should return to the hamburger sign. So for that, we can take this bars variable and we can use the class list property and we can remove the FA bars class here. So you can see that we have added this FA bars class here and that is the reason we are getting this hamburger menu. So if I change this to FA times, you can see that we have got a cross. So we want to do this through JavaScript. So let's keep it bars. And here in the JavaScript file, we'll remove the uh, bars class. So we'll say fa bars. And instead, we will add the fa times class. Similarly, if the times class is added, so we can copy and paste this here. And if the times class is added, we will remove the times class and we'll add the bars class. Now, if we click on this menu, you can see that the hamburger menu changes to the cross menu. And when we click on it back, you can see that it changes back to the hamburger menu. And when we resize it, you can see we have got all the menu items. And when we resize it to less than 600 pixel, you can see that we have got the hamburger menu. So that's how we can create a responsive top navigation bar using vanilla JavaScript. You can add more styling to it. You can make it more beautiful. Thank you for watching the video. Please hit the like button if you learned something. If you're new here, consider subscribing. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.